Hey, Chem Kids Campbell here. In this video, we're going to talk about how to calculate a percent composition and calculate empirical formulas. Percent composition is actually the mass percent of every element in a compound. And if it's the percent of every element in a compound, then those percentages have to add up to 100%. Now, how we're going to calculate the equation for percent composition is the grams of element, and that's what we're going to get from the periodic table divided by the total molar mass of the compound times 100 to get our percent. So like I said, the grams of the element is the total grams of each element found when we calculate molar mass. Remember in the previous video, I had you write down the AMU from the periodic table and multiply by the number of the atoms that were present in the formula um, for each individual element. Well, this thing is what I'm talking about right there. It's that molar mass or that atomic mass for each element times how many we have. That's actually what goes up on the top. So let's take a look at that. So remember we did the molar mass of ammonium carbonate. So this was the number of atoms here. Um, this was the AMU and nitrogen is 14. There are two of them, right? Because you got to distribute that too, which was 28. And there were eight hydrogens. So that was Eight. And so we came up with the molar mass of ammonium carbonate in our last video to be 96 grams. Now, if I want to know what percent of ammonium carbonate is nitrogen, well, what I need to do is take the mass contribution of the nitrogen, which is this 28 grams. That was what goes on the top. And on the bottom goes my molar mass, the 96. And then I multiply by 100. So that means that the percent of nitrogen in ammonium carbonate is 29.2. So I just take what I would have got when I calculate the molar mass for each element. So it's that mass, uh, atomic mass from the periodic table times how many I have, then divide by the total molar mass. That's all I do. What about hydrogen? Well, if I want to know the mass percent of hydrogen, the percent composition of hydrogen in ammonium carbonate, I'm going to take my 8 and divide by 96. So 8.3% hydrogen. Crazy, huh? There are eight hydrogens, but because hydrogen is so light, its total mass percentage is small. And we can keep doing this. I could ask you, what percentage of ammonium carbonate is, is carbon? Well, again, we're going to take our 12 and divide by the total 96 times 100, 12.5%. That's all percent composition is. It's the stuff from the periodic table that I would use when I calculate molar mass and just taking each piece and dividing by the total. So it's the part over the whole times 100. For oxygen, 48 divided by 96 is 50%. Now the key is when I go back, 50 plus 12.5 plus 8.3 plus 29.2, all of that should add up to 100%. All right. It should be plus or minus, a teeny tiny bit, but it should be very close to 100%. If it's not, then you did something wrong. You try this for barium nitrate. Pause the video and then calculate out the percent of each element in barium nitrate. So we need to go through our calculation of molar mass. So there's one barium in barium nitrate because this too is only affecting the nitrate. So the molar mass on the periodic table, this is the AMU, um, is 137. Um, there are two nitrogens, right, because I need to distribute this too. So there's two nitrogens and there's three times two or six oxygens. And each nitrogen on the periodic table is 14. So 14 times two is 28. There are six oxygens. Oxygen on the periodic table is 16, so that's 96. I add them together, and this is my total molar mass of barium nitrate. So to find the amount of barium, we're just going to take the amount that barium contributes, the 137.3, and divide by the total. And same thing for nitrogen, the amount it contributes by the total, and same for oxygen. Hopefully, this is what you got, and if you add them up, you will get close to 100%. How'd you do? Now, I asked you to watch a video over molecular and empirical formulas. And remember that the molecular formula is the real formula. It's got all of the atoms in the actual amounts present. Where an empirical formula is the formula with the simplest or reduced ratio. So like if I could divide all those numbers by a number, I reduce it to what's called the empirical formula. 
Um, and I showed some example, or um, Tyler DeWitt actually showed some examples. Um, for example, hydrogen peroxide, this is the molecular formula, but I can divide each of these by two. And so this would be the empirical formula. Ho is the empirical formula. Glucose, sugar, this is the formula for sugar. And if I divide each of these by six, I get the empirical formula, which is CH2O. So empirical formulas are the simplest formula. And now we're going to learn how to calculate them. So I want you to write down these steps. The first step is you're going to convert grams of each element that's been given in the problem into moles. So how do you go from grams to moles? You divide by the molar mass. Okay? After we've done that, after we've converted our grams to moles by dividing by, actually it'll be the atomic mass because these are going to be elements. Then we're going to divide, take those numbers, we're going to see what numbers we have and we're going to see which one is the smallest. And then we're going to divide each of the moles that we calculated in step one by the smallest number that we calculated. So, for example, if I end up with uh, one element that's like 0.3 and another that's 0.2, um, and these would be my moles, this is my smallest. So I'm going to divide each of those by the smallest number. Now, we're going to do this, so you'll see what it means, but just write this down. Then what we're going to do is once we've done this division of the smallest numbers, if each answer that we get from this division from step two is close to a whole number, so it may not be an exact whole number, like maybe it's not exactly one, maybe it's 1.1, .1, then that's close enough to one. Or if it's 1.9, that's close enough to two. So we're going to round ours to the closest whole number if it's close. But if it's not, close, say it's midway between whole numbers, so something like 1.5 or 1.49, that's close. Um, then we're going to have to multiply it by some factor so that we get a whole number. So for example, if I, when I do step two, I get a number that's 1.5. I need to make it a whole number so I can do that by multiplying by two. Because if I take 1.5 and I multiply it by two, I get a whole number, which is three. So we're trying to get whole numbers because we're going to use those numbers then to write a chemical formula. So the chemical formula, we have this whole number of moles of each atom, and we're going to write it as a chemical formula. And those numbers that we just calculated or rounded in step three, those become the subscripts, those little numbers that tell us how many of each atom we have in our chemical formula. Now you're probably like, what on earth are you talking about, Mrs. Campbell? So now we're going to do this ourselves. All right, I have a formula that contains 28.4 grams of copper and 71.6 grams of bromine. And I want to know what is its empirical formula. So remember that step one is to convert the grams of each of these elements into moles. So remember to go from grams to moles, we divide. And since these are elements, right, this is the element copper, and this is the element bromine, we go to the periodic table and we find their atomic masses. All right. So if we do that, if you go to the periodic table, you're going to find that copper has an atomic mass of 63.5 grams. And bromine has an atomic mass of 79.9 grams. So to go from grams to moles, we take the value we're given and we divide by the atomic mass. That gives me 4.47 moles of copper and 0.896 moles of bromine. So first step, convert the grams you were given into moles for each element. So divide by the molar mass or the atomic mass of each element. Step number two is we take the lowest number that we have and we divide the numbers by it. So my lowest number here, right, is 0.447. That's lower than 0.896. So in step two, what we're going to do is we're going to divide both of these by 0.447. If we do that, right, 0.447 divided by 0.447 is just one. And so you don't really have to do that division. The lowest number is always going to be number one. If I divide 0.896 by 0.47, I get the whole number 2, or something close enough to the whole number that I can round it to 2. What this means in my chemical formula is that I have one mole of copper and I have two moles of bromine. So now I'm going to write the chemical formula with the metal first 
followed by the nonmetal. Copper's a metal. So I'm going to write my chemical formula, which will be one mole of copper, so Cu, and you could put a one here, but remember the one's implied. Br2. Take grams to moles, divide by molar mass or atomic mass. Divide by the smallest number that you have from step one. Round to whole numbers if you can. Write the chemical formula with those whole numbers. That's how you do this. All right, let's try another one. We want to find the empirical formula of a compound that contains 36.4 grams of carbon and 63.6 .6 grams of nitrogen. What's step one? Step one is to convert your grams to moles. Divide by the atomic mass. So go to the periodic table, look up carbon and nitrogen and find their atomic masses. So carbon on the periodic table is 12, that's grams per mole, and nitrogen is 14 grams per mole. You should see that on the periodic table. So we're gonna take our 36.4 grams of carbon and divide by 12, or 12.001 if you wanna be really particular. That's gonna give us 3.03 moles of carbon. We're gonna take our 63.6 .6 grams of nitrogen and we're gonna divide by the molar mass of nitrogen, which I'm gonna round to 14, but I decided on the slide I'd be very, very particular with 14.007. And you get five, 4.54 moles of nitrogen. Step one, grams to moles. Step two, divide by the smallest number you just calculated. That's our 3.03, .03, right? So I'm gonna divide both of these numbers by the smallest number, 3.03. .03. So do that, right? This is gonna give you one, but what do you get when you divide 4.54 by 3.03? .03? It's not a whole number, is it? Oh, it's 1.5, which is too far to round. You cannot round that to two and you cannot call it one. It's dead center between those two numbers. So now we're gonna have to multiply by our factor. So now, since we can't just call them whole numbers, I'm gonna have to multiply both of them. I can't just multiply one, I gotta multiply both. Whatever you do to one, you gotta do the other. So we're gonna multiply both of these by two. All right, so we're gonna multiply this by two and that's gonna be two moles of carbon. I multiply this by two and I get three moles of nitrogen. All right, so now, Step four is we're just gonna write this as a chemical formula. So we have two moles of carbon and we have three moles of nitrogen. So we're gonna write C2N3. So just take those numbers now and write a chemical formula. That's how you calculate empirical formula. Try some in your packet and we'll see you in class.